we've been looking, talking about the capital budgeting methods, and we've looked at the non-discounting methods. Now, in this video, we're going to look at the discounting methods. So the first discounting method, I'm going to abbreviate it NPV. In your chapter, it's the net present value. And the other method we're going to look at is called the internal rate of return, IRR, the internal rate of return. Now, the net present value, just like the internal rate of return, uses time value money. So that's definitely an advantage of these methods. The disadvantage is that it uses the time value money. It's difficult to calculate things using time value money a lot of times for students. Um, we're going to be using the tables in the back of our textbooks. Now, you can use these tables if you'd like. The one we're going to be concentrating on is on page 1,153. This is the present value of an annuity table. Now, you can also use your calculators if you'd like, but let me warn you, if you're going to use your calculators, uh, you need to know how to use them. So you might have to break out your instruction manual and see how to use that because you can use your, your calculators on the test. If you use a calculator to calculate this on the test, you have to make sure that you put down the keystrokes that you're using for your calculator. So every keystroke that you do, you need to tell me, this is the keystroke that I use and this is the number I input. It's very easy to do, but you need to make sure that you let me know that, otherwise I'll have no idea how you got your answer. You could have got it from the person next to you. So make sure that you do that if you're using your calculator. These tables will be provided for you during the test. So if you want to use the tables, that's fine. But let me tell you that I'm not going to give you just one table. You're going to have at least two, maybe all four of the tables. So you'll have to make sure that you know which table to use. Because I don't want to just give you one table because then you know well, that's the table I've got to use. You should know which table needs to be used for these problems. Okay, so now the net present value, let's assume that we're purchasing some equipment, and let's say the cost of this equipment is going to be $100,000. So now I like to do a timeline. So let me do a timeline here. So at year zero, it's gonna cost us $100,000. Let's say in year one, two, and three, we're gonna have cash flows, net cash flows coming back $50,000. So this is saying that every single year for three years we're going to have net cash flows associated with this machinery of $50,000. So if we didn't buy this machinery we would not be encountering these cash flows. Now in the problems in your tests and on your homework this information has to be given to you or given you enough information where you could actually calculate this. Now you've got to be careful because in real life it's much it's much more difficult than this because if they told you to do the net present value you'd have to go out and you'd have to figure out what are these actual cash flows and they are very hard to determine sometimes so anyway for our chapter it's going to be easy because it's going to be given to you or enough information where you can calculate it so you can see right here the payback period is two years we're going to get paid back in two years that's pretty easy okay oh you know what i want to change my number I'm sorry, I don't want to use 100. I want to use 120,000. I'm sorry, I have an example already set up here. And if I use 100, that makes it wrong for me. So the payback then wouldn't be just two years, it'd be two and a little bit more than two years. Okay? So now, for net present value, we've got to get the net present value of all these cash flows. Well, the 120,000 is already present value. It's already at year zero. So we don't have to worry about that. It is a negative 120,000. The 50,000, however, is not. And what is this cash flow called? Hopefully you remember this is called an annuity. An annuity is equal payments, equal time periods apart. So in this, these are equal payments, 50,000 each year, and they're exactly one year apart. When they're equal payments, equal time periods apart, then we can use the net present value, I'm sorry, the present value of an annuity table, and this is on page 1,153. Now, we have to know how many periods, well, we do know, it's for three periods, this annuity. We also have to know one more thing. What is the interest rate? What is our cost of capital? What does money cost us at this time? The chapter discusses this a little bit. In your homework and on tests, this cost of capital or this discount rate, or this interest rate, those are very common terms for the interest rate, is going to be 10% in this example. So, 
when we go to the table on page 1,153 at 10% for three periods, so you go down to three periods, go across, you come to 10%, you're going to get a factor of 2.4869. So that is the factor we use to multiply by our annuity. Our annuity is the 50,000. You wouldn't add these all together. You would use the equal payment. The equal payment, equal time periods apart, is 50,000 times 2.4869 gives you 124,345. So the net present value, well, what's net income? Just adding everything up. So a negative 120,000 plus 124,435 gives us 4,345. There's our answer. The net present value is $4,345. So that's not too difficult. But let me tell you, a lot of times students say, well, you know what? For this type of investment, if I'm only netting $4,345, I don't want to do it. Well, that's erroneous thinking. Because in reality, you're not just netting $4,345. What do you think we're netting? The key is right here. We discounted this back at 10%. So that's telling us we earned 10%. And on top of that 10%, we earned additional $4,345. So basically, we earned more than 10%. So this would definitely be a good investment. I don't know about you, but I would love to earn 10%. So you need to make sure that you're remembering when you're using net present value, when you calculate it, if this is above zero, it's good. Now, it doesn't mean we're going to choose this because we're going to have multiple, multiple capital budgetings going on. We're going to have probably multiple pieces of machinery or equipment that we might be purchasing. So we're going to be comparing this. So right now we would say we will consider this one. We're not going to reject it because it is a positive net present value. We're not going to reject it, but we're not going to say we're going to accept it either because we want to look at all of our other proposals that we have out there. Now, let me also tell you something else here. When you're looking at this, if you calculated this out to be exactly zero, that tells us something. If the net present value is zero, then you earned exactly 10%. Okay, hopefully you can understand that. Um, let's move on now to the internal rate of return. So let me erase this. We're now going to look at the internal rate of return. Now let me erase a few things here. So for the internal rate of return, what we're trying to calculate here is, what is our actual return? What is that actual interest rate? So that's what we're trying to solve. Well, remember I told you when this equals exactly zero, that is the interest rate. So let's force this to equal zero. Well, how do we force it to equal zero? Well, let's just change this. Let's make our present value equal 120,000. If our annuity equaled exactly 120,000, then our net present value would be zero, which would be the exact interest rate. So what you do on the internal rate of return is set your annuity equal to your cash outlay. Now remember, these are all cash flows we're talking about in our discounting methods. Okay, so now let me erase this so I can now solve this, okay? What we don't know is the factor. This is the number that's in the table. So what we need to do is we need to solve for this. So what we do is we divide both sides by 50,000. So what we get then is x equal to roughly 2.4. x is equal to 2.4. Does that mean 2.4%? Absolutely not. It does not mean 2.4%. What we need to do is go to the table. We need to go to the table and this would be on the same page, 1,153. We know that this annuity is for three periods. So go down to n equals the three, three periods. Go across till you find that factor. When you go across at three periods, you'll see a 2.4. At three periods, 2.4 relates to 12%. So there is our answer. Remember, you have got to go to the tables or you could factor this, put this into your calculator. Now, once again, all of you have different calculators, so I'm not going to sit here and tell you how to do it on your calculator. 
That's going to be your responsibility if you want to learn how to do it on your calculator. Excel also has formulas how to do it, but the, the downfall of that is I can't let you take a computer into the exam. So if you want to do it on Excel, that's fine, but you need to make sure that you know how to do it using the tables, which will be provided, or on your calculator. And if you use your calculator, once again, you need to tell me what steps you're putting into your calculator. Make sure you always show me your work. So once again, the return would be 12%. And that actually makes perfect sense because in the net present value, remember we calculated the net present value at 10% and it was a positive net present value. So that told us that we're earning over 10%. So what are we earning? We're earning actually 12%. So in this chapter, the chapter is actually much longer than this, but we're just going to concentrate on what capital budgeting is and then looking at uh, the payback period, the unadjusted rate of return, the net present value, and lastly, the internal rate of return. You know how to calculate, you have to know how to calculate all of these things for the test and really understand what this is. This is a very good chapter and we're just going to talk about just the beginning part of it, okay? But it really is important because businesses do these things. They have to do these things to make sure that they're investing their money in the right places, that they're spending their money on equipment, machinery. You can do this for buildings. You can do this for new product lines. You know, the bigger the project, the more costly it is and the harder it is to do this, okay? Now this example here just showed one cash flow. When you're doing net present value, you might have differing cash flows. You might have a payment you're making here so you might, just, you might not be doing just an annuity, you might be doing some things that need to be discounted back to the present singularly. singularly. So then you would be using the present value of a dollar, table one. Okay, so hopefully you remember your uh, tables here. Present value of an annuity, this would be an annuity. Present value of a single amount. Let's say that um, it told you that you were gonna have to pay out $1,000 in repairs or maintenance in year two you would have to calculate what is the present value of this. You'd have to bring back that payment, but it's not an annuity, that is a single amount. So you'd use table number one for two periods out at whatever the interest rate is. Okay, so hopefully uh, you understand that. If not, you might have to go back to a chapter in Accounting 230 to brush up on that just a little bit. All right, well, good luck with this chapter, and I will talk to you soon.